Hello, everyone. This is Josh Oaks, and you're listening or watching the smartsocial.com podcast. Today, I'm being interviewed on another podcast. I have two experts here that are awesome, and we are just going to wrap. We're going to dialogue. We're going to share, and our one priority is to help you to protect your family online, and we're going to protect you from screen time, from bad people. We're going to give you some college prep advice. We have events, webinars, and everything else and I'm honored to get the chance to talk with these individuals because their heart is aligned with mine. And today you're listening to us in the car, you're maybe doing laundry like I do when I listen to podcasts, or you're watching us on YouTube or my Facebook page, as right now you probably see me. And uh, I'm just gonna give it to you live. I thought I would record this because we like to record stuff and share it with the world because we have very, very little time to do this. Now I'm gonna turn it over to the podcast owners. Go ahead, gentlemen. Hey everybody, this is Alex Forrest here with Jay Lorenz and as you heard, Josh Oaks and you're listening to the Screen Smart Podcast. Josh, thanks for joining us today, man. We really appreciate the time you're giving us. Hey, thank you for having me out. This is fun. So Josh is with uh, Smart Social, uh, which is, uh, as you heard a little earlier, he's got just a huge uh, amount of resources on that website. But Josh, tell us a little bit about as we get going here. Smart Social, what it is and how you got started uh, down this journey. I got started many years ago learning from smart marketers at Disney Studios. They, they know how to make a product valuable to people and they go, whoa, I got to take that home. Wow, I have to make this a part of our family. I have to put it on the shelf, you know, in the house. And back then it was DVDs, but now we're all streaming. And I learned from those people at a very young age how to brand something well. And then I took it and I used myself as a case study and I ran for city council in Hermosa Beach, California, suburb of LA. And, and I ran as a positive person and I ended up getting really nerdy into, and I, I suggest to every student to read old school books. And I got good at what's called direct response marketing. I learned how to get people using social media in a very old school way. And I started doing that and I ended up uh, making a name for myself while just paving a slow way to do it. Long story short, I, I got asked by one of our big corporate partners. Uh, they said, hey, will you, will you fly to our city and, and teach us how you were able to run for city council in such a positive way? You lost by this much, by 350 votes, but we want, you, we want to see how you did this on a zero budget. We want to learn how you, you killed the internet with kindness and you really had some nerdy stuff to do. Will you please teach us how to do that and speak at our conference and do this and train our staff? And one day, and this is what I want to tell every parent that's listening to this right now. One day, one of my PR firm clients, the president of a PR firm, who is just a, a dear friend now, she said, look, thank you for training our 40 employees here in Los Angeles on PR best practices and how you do your nerdy social media stuff tomorrow or next week, I want you to speak to my daughter's school on digital safety. And I went, what? And I had never done that before. And she said, yeah, you have a lot of safety built into this. And I really think my daughter's middle school would benefit. And I want you, cause I just paid you a lot of money. I want you to go speak to my daughter's school. And I went, okay. That's and this great. was many, many years ago. And I did it and I had way more fun doing that than I've ever had before. And I sort of took my corporate job and we we tweaked it and we, we set a different mission. We said, we're going to teach kids safety and smart online and it, and it moved. Now I still advise big brands, but, but 90, 80% of my day job is really here to teach the world how to be smart on social media. We do have a safety a foundation and then we really hit the ground running and we lean in and teach students how to build a resume while we, we teach students basically how to protect their future and parents how to protect their children. Yeah, so that's one thing I wanted to to just dive straight into is I, I think when we talk about social media as parents, a lot of times we do it out of fear of, of what could go wrong and what our kids could be exposed to. You address it differently. I mean, there's you definitely address that reality, but a lot of your focus is on what what social media can do for kids in a positive sense and how they can, as you say, shine online. Tell us tell us about that. What's what's that look like? Yeah. So the first thing that if I told children, don't touch the hot stove, what's the first thing every parent's listening going, oh, they're going to want to touch that hot stove. Right. So instead, I say, hey, how, raise your hand if you've Googled yourself in the last month and half the room raises their hand. Raise your hand if you've ever Googled your parents and they all giggle and raise their hand. Raise your hand if you've Googled your principal or a teacher's name and they all really giggle and they go, ah, and Okay, I'm going to teach you how colleges will search for you online. We are going to show you today how to get hired and how to get fired. Now, you don't need to use these. And I tell students, I go, look, 
You're an adult in my eyes. I'm not going to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm going to show you examples and I'm going to give you these tools and you can throw them out the window. But I see you at the, between the ages of 18 to 25 getting a great career. And I'm going to show you how to use these iPhones and Androids with a purpose instead of a pastime. And that's how we start it. And we start it by talking to the kids and they're listening. I will teach you today how to get fired. I will show you the exact tweet that you should send to ruin your career at an amazing company. We're going to show you how incredible the company is. And, I, and that's how we speak to students is not don't touch the stove, but instead we tell parents, why don't you ask your students, are you hungry? And they're going to, yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Great. I'm going to teach you how we're going to make spaghetti and I need your help. I have tasks for you. I'm going to show you how to use that sharp knife that you the, that appliance this this that hot stove we're going to make something together and i'll show you the use case of everything so you're not wondering why is that thing in the corner that i'm not allowed to touch and so that's the way we approach it and i'm really just speaking to myself when i was a kid people i have people told me don't touch that fence don't do that and i just would get frustrated and i would as a good kid i would break the rules because all I wanted to do was touch that hot stove. Why the heck is that happening? So that's how we talk to students is, you've got a future and I wanna show you how to get there. If you wanna be a bozo on Snapchat, that's fine. But I'm gonna show you how that will end up on your Google results and ruin that future. And, and are you guys ready? And then that's when the students go, yeah, yeah, we're, we're ready now. And I get them focused on the five to eight year plan instead of um, fear of what they're doing. Cause they'll roll their eyes during that fear time. Yeah. yeah and, and, I, and I listened to your presentation uh, you had a, you gave to a middle school, you put it on your podcast and I will we'll stick that in the show notes too. Cause it, it is a, it's a high energy, great presentation. It sounds like the kids were, were, were right with you. What, what do you say to, to parents who don't want their kids to use social media at all? And they're just, just want to shut it down and not, not turn that, that thing on at all. Well, that's a great question. Um, there's, I mean, I, I think everybody listening to this right now, let's talk about how we're all aligned. You could say, let's use something we know of because social media is still pretty new. If you've been doing it in the corporate space, you're thinking, oh, I've been doing this a lot. I do marketing for companies or if, but let's talk about sugar. Sugar is something where you can say, it's not going to be in our house. Our kids are never going to get it and they won't even know about it. I don't want to tell my kids about sugar until I'm ready to tell them that about sugar. Well, your kids don't stay in your house. They go to school. They go to their friend's house. They do all this stuff. They're going to discover this drug, but, and it is. I love it. I'm a little bit addicted to Twix and ice cream. But if my parents said, we're never going to talk about it, and we're never going to do that, I would discover it at Billy's house or Sandy's house or whatever, and I would go crazy and not tell my parents, and I would have no way to deal with this as an adult. So I like to tell people, don't make it a bad thing. Talk to your kids about it. The number one tip we have for parents, I don't want to get too ahead of myself right now, but it's go audit your kids to see what, who's online, what, what their digital footprint is. And then second dialogue with your kids. We have a third tip we'll talk about later, but dialoguing with your kids about where they want to go to college, what they want to do and having a plan will let them use Snapchat. If, if you allow them to be on it and let them use Instagram and everything else with that purpose and treating them like a little adult means that you can keep it from a, a little bit, give them a taste test of the sugar, but they know how to deal with it because they will see it at their friends' houses. Yeah. A lot of what you're talking about to me just kind of tracks with what we talk about purpose. You said purpose instead of pastime. Uh, we use the word intentional. Um, I love that all of those things you're talking about have some intent, some purpose behind them. Um, you know, as a parent, a lot of times we, we don't understand this stuff. Um, you know, our kids know it better than we do. How many times have we asked somebody, Hey, can you help me set this up on my phone? It used to be, Hey, can you help me record a TV show? Um, so as parents, how can we educate ourselves and so that we can be intentional? What are some, some go-to resources that you have or that you've seen that as a parent, I could go and, learn a little bit before I have these talks with my kids. All right. So I have a few ideas, resources at smartsocial.com. Can I, may I share that at this moment? Absolutely. Please. Okay, so um, everybody that's, that's right now watching us live on some of our systems, if you're in the car right now, I'm about to share my computer screen and I will dialogue about it as we speak. And uh, we're looking, we're taking a look at smartsocial.com 
And at smartsocial.com, we have something 100% free that uh, thousands and thousands of people have taken part in, and it's called our Parent Safety Webinar. It teaches you the worst apps that you should keep a lookout for. It's, it's the, the apps that are over a million users or so, over 500,000 users that students will run into, the, the sugar of the world, so that you can at least know if you see it on your kids' phones. And if you take this webinar, I walk you through personally, it's, it's an automated webinar that happens every day. You can watch yesterday's pre-recorded. I mean, there's no secrets. I see every comment. Number one, it teaches you some of our high-level stuff, a way to approach it. And number two, it teaches you all the bad apps. And, sh and, and that's number one. The second step is something that costs $1. I used to partner with my friends at Microsoft in Los Angeles, and they, they used to give me their headquarters and say, use whatever you want. Let's talk about digital. And I used to go to great lengths and have my staff, and I would pay literally $10,000 to host this amazing event, to put us on the map, to learn from educators. That does not, uh, is not sustainable, but we're doing the same thing, but we're doing it online now. We call it Smart Social Week. It's an online parent conference to get your kids off their screens. And that's because screen, um, screen addiction is something you, that everybody on this podcast right now, everyone listening, everyone watching, they, are, they know about it, but nobody's talking about it like an addiction to cigarettes or alcohol. And we are all in it together as an adult and as a kid. So we have Smart Social Week. That's a $1 conference where you get 70 experts. That's seven zero. And it teaches you all about screen time addiction, both the safety and the smart side of social media. Screen, but it's really around screen time and it's designed for parents and educators. There's some kid content in there. We have one last thing. So the first one is free. Smart Social Week is, is a dollar. It's, it's an amazing value. It's a dollar as of the time of this viewing. It goes up uh, after the conference. We, we sell the, the resources a little bit more. We have something called Parent University as well. And that's our third tranche. And that's the one where parents at home for about $100 can protect their child with videos that their kids watch. The number one thing we hear from parents is, I'm tired of being the bad person. I'm tired of being that mom that the kids hate and I, I want to love my kids and, and tell them what they don't want to hear. And good parenting means your kids are going to hate you once a week, once a month. <laughs> They're going to be angry. You're the worst mom ever because you took my phone away and I, I hate you, right? I mean, that's a normal thing. That means you love your kids more than, than you worry about them liking you. Well, we created Parent University. They're positive videos that teach parents and students how to use social media to be safe and shine online. Make us the bad people right? This dad said, my daughter enjoyed your style of teaching. She really liked your video that taught how 10 students got kicked out of Harvard using social media. And it really teaches a lot of stuff. So this is a whole, basically a, a one month course that you watch around the dinner table. You get old school. You don't have to watch all 20 courses. You pick one, two, or three and it's affordable and it protects, and then it protects your family from bad stuff that might happen. Parent only videos and then family videos. It's a combination of both. And, and I think a resource like that is, is a, a great way to use a resource like that is when your kid is about to get a phone, you're going to take the plunge. Here's the deal. We're going to, we're going to get through this phone. A condition of that is you're going to watch these videos with us and we're going to have a, have a conversation about what, what we're going to do with this phone and what you're not going to do with the phone and, and how we can manage this thing well and, and control it. So it doesn't control you. Let me, let me, let me pause this for a sec. Let me ask you two a question. Let's, let's, let's keep this dynamic. Um, <clears throat> here's my biggest frustration, and I wanna hear from you two. You two, the experts, I'm a little too close to the data, and I wanna tell you the concern that we see all the time, and I'd like for you two to teach me. Number one, Alex, you just said it would be great if people watched this at this time, and every parent only joins if they go, well, you don't understand. My kid is a year too young for what you have or a year too old or they're not this or they're not online. They have a million reasons why they aren't in the middle of the target. They're around here. I'll be ready for that. I'll be ready to check my credit when I'm ready to buy that house. Well, you think you're crazy because you have to check your credit from time to time to make sure you're ready in 20 years to, you know, we all understand that. But every parent has a reason why they're not ready. Parents that are in it love it. Some parents get it. But what would you say to somebody what would you tell us? Because there are tranches. You, you want to get it before that you give a phone to your kids. You want to give it before your ki while your kid's in high school, before they mess up, before they apply to college, before they apply to that internship, and then 
a few uh, before they get that scholarship into X, Y, and Z, what would you tell parents knowing the frustration that we have of human nature? Parents are great. They love their kids, but we're still two years ahead of parents going, wow, I need this no matter where I'm at. What would you tell parents based on what you guys have seen at the Screen Smart podcast about, hey, at every level, we need to keep learning? Well, I think I think that's a great way to put it for me is that at, at every level, whether your kids are, and we've talked, we've had conversations on this podcast aimed at, you know, uh, parents of toddlers, you know, when it, when it really just looks like here's a phone. So you shut up while we're eating dinner at a restaurant, you know, starting there and just going on up. But, but it's the idea that, uh, you know, what you do matters at each step of the way. And, and, you know, it's easier the earlier you start. And so I think there is danger for somebody. I, I, what I just said, somebody might say, well, gosh, you know, my kids already knee deep in Instagram and I, maybe it's too late for me to do this. I get what you're saying there. To me, it's all about what's the best we can do now. And it may be more difficult if we start later, but let's start, just do something. Yeah. To me, it's about being proactive in our parenting and being in, you know, making a decision that I'm going to be ready for this conversation when it happens, not if it happens. It's, it's the same way with, with pornography, with the sex talk. I want to be ready to go because I can't control when my kid is going to say, Hey, uh, what is this? Hey, what is that? But I need to be ready to answer that question. So to me, it's about, let's be proactive. Let's, let's, learn these things on our own so that when our kids come to us with it or we think we're ready for it, we have what we need to equip them. So it's, I think, equipping ourselves ahead of time so that we can equip them when the time is right to me. That's why it makes sense to, you know, if your kid's three, you need this. <laughs> so you're ready to go when they're five and six and seven to have conversations. That's how I'd look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, side note, I'm going to plug something that I don't get paid by, but we're, we're hitting on a bunch of bigger stuff. If your kid's really young and you're handing them an iPhone and Android, uh, an iPad, which is totally normal, if they see inappropriate pictures, there is a book that we're recently really starting to look into. The whole porn thing is a huge deal online. It's called good pictures, bad pictures. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of the sex trafficking that we're diving into and we're really trying to target as are you guys safe screen use and stuff. Yeah. Um, but to your point, Jay, a younger and younger age, probably not a bad age at five, six and seven. What are good pictures? What are bad pictures? How do we dialogue with our parents about that? Yeah. So crucial. Yeah, that's good. So talk to me about what are the biggest frustrations that you guys see right now with parents? What are you seeing and what are you hearing on your website as you interact with people and as you're interviewing people? I, I would say this, that it seems to me that a lot of parents fall into one of two categories and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of middle ground. Category one is laissez-faire, complete initiative, do what you want. The other side is the complete opposite pole is the parent that we're not doing cell phones until you're, you know, driving a car. We're not doing, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's the polarity of one extreme or the other. Or and we're trying to kind of stake out this middle ground, uh, which I, I, is what I appreciate what you're doing um, is, is trying to, you know, the, the people on the one side, we, Hey, pay attention. You know, what are, you, what are your kids doing online? People on the other side, Hey, you know, it's the ostrich approach isn't necessarily the best you know, stick burying your head in the sand. So what, let's, let's meet in the middle. Yeah. Jay. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's the very thing that came to my mind. It's, and again, it goes back to, um, you know, this stuff is here. It's not going anywhere. Um, in fact, I would say that as our kids grow and get older, it's going to become more prevalent. It's going to be more ingrained into society because that's where, I mean, Josh, you talked about data. Data shows that's where kids are living. You know, their peer groups, their friends, their relationships are being formed on social media in a lot of ways. So I think as our kids grow older, the world around them is going to, it's, it's going to be more important than ever that we prepare them for it. So Alex, you said, you know, that middle ground of, Hey, let's not bury our head, but we, we need to have some, we need to have some control over the reins, but we also need to let them out. 
So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I want to share some data with everybody on the podcast right now. It's confidential information. I can't really share where it came from, but I do know somebody in the U.S., uh, as do you two, you get somebody reached out to us, a lot of companies and say, will you advise us? And if they're not a kid's app, if they actually are out there to help people, we'll say, yeah, we'll give you advice. You can put us on your website. I received from a, a some findings from a an addiction organization that helps kids remove themselves from screen time. It is a, a summer camp that you go and you camp in the woods or you build stuff. It's really cool. I don't want to share anything about them because it could be, um, but I advise them. And I want to tell you um, that this summer camp does really good things for children, but they realized that the issue was so big that it can't just be a summer camp. They had to turn people down and send people away because so many parents said, my child is on Fortnite four hours a day and it's starting arguments and all this stuff. I wanna send them away for two weeks. Now they don't send them away. Some parents will get an Airbnb right next door. But it, let me summarize real quick. One, it is massive. If you see, if anyone listening or watching this right now, if your kid is online all the time, it leads to something and there's all this data that, that we have in the email that I can't share. And number two, one of the biggest problems when the student would lash out, the camp would ask, well, why did, why did this student lash out and use a bunch of four letter words when we genuinely cared about them and said, can, can we talk this through? And when the parents would come to pick up the kid, the parents would act the same way. And so we fe they found that the parents' behavior was exactly what the students would do. And that's why right now, anyone listening to this right now, that's, make sure you know that your students, every time you're using your phone, checking your email, getting distracted from being present, or if you're, something's buzzing and you have a bad response to it versus a good response, your kids are listening. They're watching everything you do and now is the time especially around screens to set a good example i hate telling people that vague stuff but we're seeing that students are little mini me's from parents even at this summer camp who the summer camp can't tell parents hey your kid behaved exactly like you did and it was very <laughs> there were it was full of four letter words and all this stuff but please know if you're listening or watching this right now now is your chance to clean it up just a little bit i'm not perfect i ran for politics uh you know I, and and i had to make sure every ounce of my life was clean but um your kids are just going to be a little mirror image of you someday and your goal as a parent right now is is to make sure that your kid, you're gonna have your own goals, but your kid at the age of 25 is really cool to hang out with. So if your kid right now is, you feel like you're gonna upset them by taking that phone away. Remember when they're 25, will it make them a better person? Is loving them, parenting them gonna be annoying now, but is it going to be better uh, when they're 25? And if it is, then it might be the right thing to do. And most parents will go, no, that's their private. I don't, I don't have the right to know their passcode. Um, that's their privacy. And then all the law enforcement in the room will roll their eyes. And then we get a big dialogue about that. But just know that they are doing everything <laughs> that, that, that they see you do. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that, that comment because I, I think of that uh, even I think an easier way to think of that maybe would be to think of, of driving. If your kids get to a certain age, my oldest is a teenager now. And I started thinking, man, he's in the car with me. He's going to drive the way I drive. And so I got to be, you know, I, I can't pick up the phone. You know, I, I certainly, I can't be texting. I can't be driving like a jerk. You know, he's going to drive. He's going to drive the way I drive. And I think it, if that's true, how much it's, it's equally true. If I'm always looking at my phone, if my phone's dinging every five minutes and I leave a conversation, He's going to be the same way. And, and, you know, nobody likes to hang out with somebody like that. Yeah. It's cool. One of the, one of the guys we talked with, I don't remember who it was, but a little simple thing that he gave us that I've used. I was talking to a couple hundred parents a few weeks ago and I, this is the greatest takeaway that I think that the feedback I got. Um, if, you know, the simple act of picking up your phone and saying out loud. Yeah. What, I was thinking that. <laughs> Change say, that it. Oh, say, that say, say that again, the simple yeah. act of picking up your phone picking and up your phone and saying out loud what you're doing with it so that your kids or the people around you and your friends that you're hanging out with see it as a tool that you're using for something. Hey, you know, that's a great idea. We should look that up or I'm going to check the weather or 
hey, I need to check. So just that little thing, and I've implemented that, and it has changed, I think, just the way that my kids see me interacting with my phone. Not that it's something I'm escaping to or that's controlling me, but I'm using it as a tool for a specific purpose. So that, that was a great takeaway. I love that because you're, and, and it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do. And a lot of the times it's great to say, that's a great question. I'm going to Google that. Yeah. And the person knows you're still, that your dialogue with them is first and foremost, I'm going to add value to that. I'm going to use this phone with a purpose instead of a pastime. Yep. Absolutely love that. One of my other friends in the tech business said this to me. He said, I'm really trying to just take mobile minutes where you're on for a minute, a micro minute, and then you put it away and you're with people. Hey, I'm going to check my inbox just for a sec. Let me, I've got one client that's really, you know, hard to deal with. I want to check that. Another thing that I do is I have one of these watches, which seems like it's always on, but my phone is always on silent mode. If I'm in a meeting, you will never know that I'm getting a call ever. And it's just, this buzz is only during calls and texts and I can check it when I want. If it's buzzing a lot, it means I'm getting a call and I can simply look at it and then it goes away. But you'll never know that I'm getting a call or a text because I don't want anyone to know except for me. And that's, that's one of the neat things about this. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Transition back to what you were talking about a little bit, Josh, with the camp. Uh, And I heard the presentation you gave at a a school out there in California, alluded to it earlier. And you, at the end of that, you kind of rolled out some new material and you were talking about uh, taking a break from social media. And and what, I don't remember the term you use, a digital detox or a Sabbath or, or, or what was it, but tell us about that. Yeah. So this summer um, I got a, uh, I bought a house that I was going to remodel. And I just realized this summer because I'm a full-time person in this space. So I, you could say I'm a full-time educator, even though I'm a private businessman on the, uh, but I, but a lot of what I do on the speaking side has to do with students. So I just realized I'm not as happy go lucky and positive as I normally am. And I just realized that there's a lot of, I I wasn't the awesome positive person lifting other people up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take a little break. And I announced on social media with a big image. I said, I'm taking a digital detox, a low tech vacation, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to take this and I announced it everywhere. In four days, I'm deleting the apps from my phone. I started to get calls from people and they said, is, is everything okay? And I said, what, what, what do you mean? Is everything okay with you? Is it? And they said, well, I can't believe you're getting off social media. This must be terrible for business. I, I get literally got acquaintances writing, what a bad business move. And I went, are you kidding me? If the, what if a child did this? Yeah. And anyways, long story short, I deleted the app for one week. And I jumped into my house and I finished my stairs. I, re- I finished my kitchen cabinets, which look awesome now. I redid a bunch of stuff. Got a lot more stuff to do. I got to do some baseboards back here. This is the home office. Got a bunch of stuff to do. But it, my therapy in life is a power drill. I'm, I'm not, I can't play a musical instrument, but I, I can fix most appliances. My dad taught me how to do this and YouTube teaches me the rest. And so I dove into podcasts and, and just you know rebuilding this home. And when I came out of that going, all right, I'm going to re-download these. And I told the world, if you want to contact me, you text me, call me or whatever, you know where to find me. Cool. I'm still going to be social and text people and call people. I just won't be doing the two of the C's. I'm going to tell you what the C's are in a sec. I, when I uh, re-downloaded, I was going to re-download the app seven days later and I had so much fun being off of them. I went another week and somebody at church overheard me that I was doing this. And he said, I'm deleting them also. Now, this student is on the podcast as well. He's an agent. Uh, he works in the actor's business, uh, getting actors jobs, like, you know, the kind of agent stuff that you see. And he said, yeah, I had a great time. I did this, this, and this. I put him on the podcast and he was motivated by it. So it turned out I wasn't missing much and I detox and I tell students that. I say, hey, students, here's a crazy idea. But just for a week, tell your friends, I'm going to focus on my classwork. I, I want to study more. I want to do whatever that is that makes you feel comfortable. Consider deleting the apps or Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever, just for a week. Try it. Tell everybody where you're at and tell them why you're doing it and then delete it and um, see what happens just for a week. It doesn't mean you're canceling your account. Now, when I did this, I shared this with one of my family members, um, my cousin's daughter, who's in high school. She looked at me and said, 
duh, Josh. And I said, what do you mean, duh? She said, I, Josh, I've done this four times in high school. I've deleted all my apps and gone and focused for a month. She said, now I approach social media very differently. Now I see it as what it is. It's a, time, it's a black hole and I need to be gentle. Don't get too close to it or it'll suck me in for too long. But I'm not as inclined to want to go to it. I also have one more suggestion. If, if uh, deleting them for a week seems crazy, I think you're going to see more people doing that soon. Um, then in addition or instead, go to Snapchat, go to Instagram and unfollow 100 people. Only follow the people that you truly know that you want to see because there's four C's to social in my opinion. Can I share those with you guys right now? Please. Love it. Social media is really good when you're connecting and communicating, right? We meet somebody at a networking event or somebody comes to your home to have dinner and your kids are following them online. It's cool. Family, friends, connecting, communicating, DMing, direct messaging, Instagram, whatever. I met them in life and I'm communicating with them now. I was able to almost win an election with that. We just meet them on their doorstep and they, they don't hate me and they're, they're learning and then they, I communicate to them and they go, I'm gonna vote for that guy, sweet. It works in every industry. But then there's two more C's. You see, we wanna connect and communicate, but as soon as we're on our phones too much, it turns into the next C, which is comparing. And we look at people, they're skinnier, they're on vacation, they're dating somebody better looking than, than, than I, the person I'm dating. I wish I had that car. And it's just gentle, it's subtle. And then we start comparing ourselves and that leads your students to having depression, anxiety, and just not feeling as good because we put our fake life online. Now, it's, some of us make fun of ourselves online so it's a little bit more believable, but that's the comparing thing. And then the last thing, that the last C that we see is the consuming C. And that's when we pick this up because we're bored and it gives us a dopamine rush, that little tiny hit, because we're in line at the bank. I'll check yeah. this, I'll scroll through. That scroll never ends, they design it, they have engineers that know, okay, let's download the next five so that when he scrolls, he gets an instant hit of the next people. There are engineers doing some amazing things. So comparing and all consuming it's really the devil. That's the evil part. That's the enemy that we don't want social to have for your kids. Instead, we just want them to com connect, uh, to, to basically connect and communicate on social. That's great. One of, the, one of the ways, I was going to say, Alex, one of the ways that we handle things in our house is if you're consuming, we limit it. If you're creating, go for it. You know, you can watch 30 minutes. You can make three hours of iMovies, you know? Mm -hmm. That's kind of how we, how we lay it out for our kids, so I, I love that. And there's really only two types of people in this world, not only two, but there's consumers and creators, and the yep. consumers yep. are gonna sit on Netflix uh, and just, and have yep. their mouth open. And then there's the creators that are gonna go build something in the house, share it online, and teach others how to do it, yep. right? Alex, you had something to say. Well, it's, guys, I'll just ask both of you. I mean, how, how do you move your kids from consume to create? Uh, how do how do we embrace the first two C's, Josh, uh, while uh, not going full bore into just being consumers and uh, the, the trap of comparison? Can I bring it full circle real quick? Yeah. One, go Google your kids and find out what their online brand is. My kids aren't online yet, or my kids are already online, or nothing bad's happened. The go the government will call me if something bad. Just go Google your kids. And then second, the way to turn your kids into creators is to have a plan and that plan happens. It's crazy, very few people have done this, but when they do it, they, they tell me it works. Go visit a college campus with your kid in elementary school, middle school, or high school. Go do this once a month. Hey, we're gonna go to the local junior college, which is by the way, in California, junior college is the best thing in the world. I went, I couldn't afford a four year. I went to USC, but nobody knows that I did three years at junior college to save up for the most expensive thing in the world, which is a four year private school. Go to a community college, a junior college, a local private, whatever it is, and go tour it and go, hmm, how about this major? engineering, this, science, whatever. Get your kid thinking and planning their future and then they're gonna know, boy, this is a goal that I want or this is something that I don't, that major I don't like this and they're, they're planning the right thing. Then they can create based on that. They can create like, hey, I wanna build something and I know that that professor or that football coach or whoever is going to look at me and I want, because I wanna be on that campus because that looks like it's fun. 
So now they're going to start creating content with that person in mind that will someday gauge their resume. Those are just kind of some of our nerdy tips. You could also go to lunch with somebody that advises your kid, somebody that's your kid looks up to, they take them to lunch or something. And then they know that person will interview me someday. And when they're creating, it really doesn't matter what they do. They could be a bios raspberry Pi computer thing, program something, build something or skateboard. They know that person's watching. Yeah. I love it. I would, I would say just to add to that, what we talked about before men, uh, modeling, um, you know, I try and create, Part of my job is creating. Um, my kids see me doing this. It's creating stuff. So I try and model that for them so they see me creating. So hopefully they want to do that also. So when they're in, when they're creating, I'm encouraging. So That's good. I like that. Josh, as we, as we move to kind of wrap wrap this up, we've brought it full circle. Tell, tell our listeners where they can learn more about you, uh, about what you guys are doing at Smart Social and, and some of the resources you have. Yeah, so at smartsocial.com, which is is our, our resource, we I think we hit about a million people a year, a million visits a year that that visit our website. There's something that every parent finds somewhat helpful, and that's called the parent app guide at the upper right. Uh, parent app, the popular app guide, parent app guide. It's been shared about ten thousand times. And this is one of the resources that a lot of parents, if you see an app that you don't know on your kid's phone, we have something called the green zone. These are the apps that are a starting place, but they're not safe. It's like a knife. It's not safe with your three-year-old. It's a place where when they're old enough to learn how to cut that tomato, then here's the good knife to get, but it can still hurt them. And that's where resume building apps that are full of communicating and connecting are, are good. Facebook uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, when they're ready. And that's 14 years and older. Take our little webinar for free. But then there's the gray zone that everybody needs to know about. That's the, those are the apps that we don't feel are good. Either they're getting your kid on too young or they're full of just too much time consuming stuff. And then we have something called the red zone. These are the anonymous apps. If an app encourages your student to not have a real identity, to not build something around their resume, to not build something around your family's name, then they're going to bring out the worst behavior in, in human nature, meaning human nature isn't good when we're tying ourselves to bad behavior. So we have the red zone apps. We tell you all about the challenges that are out there and fake apps and stuff. That means the downside drastically outweighs the upside. Kids will try and sell it to you and say, oh, but you don't understand, mom, it's fine. And but really, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of downside. We explain that all to you at smartsocial.com. If you click on the popular app guide or parent app guide, uh, that's, that's something that, that seems to help people. And they see that resource as a way to just better understand. And that's the favorite thing about the speeches that pa parents have told us is we appreciate you alerting us to the bad apps before our kids know about them. Yeah, yeah, but it's a great resource. We'll definitely link to that uh, in the show notes at screensmartpod.com uh, so, so we can get folks to that. It's, it's the kind of resource that we, we definitely want our listeners to, to take advantage of and uh, we, we ourselves will be using. So yeah, uh, appreciate that. Uh, and anything else, Jay, Josh, before we, before we wrap up today? Jay, anything else? Um, I would just encourage people to sign up for the – the the dollar uh the online conference the smart online social conference. week yeah. smart the social dollar. week yeah, yeah. let yeah. me just go ahead and, and talk about some of the things just real quick while we have you yeah. some of the things that we're going to talk about it's not pushing it i i lose money a little bit because yeah. when we get your credit card number you take stuff seriously when you when you put money down on the horse races you're going to follow your horse because you're you're Attention yeah. goes to where your money's at. That's something we all know. And so that's why I want your dollar. <laughs> It'll be about $100 once the conference is over if you want to unlock the videos. But I'm in this for the money, but I'm not going to make money in the long run. We're going to make so many friends. We're going to help people. I want to talk to you about what we've found to be the most valuable panel discussions at this conference. Yeah. This is all in podcasts, so you can listen to it through your iPhone, your, you know, your 
on the road and you can read it if you're a skimmer like me. How to talk about the dark side of social media. These are all for middle school parents and educators. We have one track for middle school parents, one track for high school. You better believe you can mix and match because you, you, the kids are no, you know, it's, it's obviously helpful on both sides. Is your child ready for the first cell phone? Uh, what parents need to know about online personal security and safety. How to limit screen time without conflict. Ooh, that's a big one. How to monitor your kids online without being intrusive. Five experts share signs of cyberbullying and tactics for prevention. How to set a good example for kids online and technology ad addiction red flags to look out for. Now over on the high school track, how colleges search for students online, how social media can have a positive impact on students. We're really giving you a purpose here. 10 ways students can avoid oversharing on social media and online. The ultimate LinkedIn guide for students, we have, I have an expert that's a C-level person or a senior VP at a major company that we can't even mention, but she took time aside to show how she interviews people and what she wants to see on your LinkedIn. She's delightful and amazing, and she's, she's teaching that course. Uh, social media cleanup and how-to guide for students, 15 plus extracurricular activities to boost your college resume, and eight social media safety talking points for parents. Um, I feel like I should raise the price. We're written. No, I'm just kidding. But it, it, it's, a, it's a lot of value. And even if you just for $1 dove into half of one of the, the professional voiceovers that I've hired somebody to do, it I think will add value. And we're here to save. We're here to serve and save. And if, if one child is, is helped, then we're doing, we're doing good. So that's called it's smartsocial.com. It's called Smart Social Week. November 13th, 14th, and 15th, each day we release three new little baby panel discussions that you can log in and listen to on your phone and we make it mobile friendly. Awesome. And we'll, we'll definitely link to all of that at screensmartpod.com and encourage you to go. I, I'm, I'm going to drop a dollar on it. Jay's going to drop a dollar on it. Yep. We encourage you to do the same thing. But uh, Well, Josh, thanks, man, for, uh, for your time today. I, I'm excited about everything you're doing. And, yep. uh, I just look forward. Maybe we can talk again sometime and, and uh, we're all moving in the right direction here. I hope. And I thank you. Thank you to both of you. You have day jobs, you have stuff to do and you took time out today to, you know, it's, it's one fifty one after in the afternoon here in Los Angeles and you're on different time zones doing different stuff. And I appreciate what you're doing because it takes a village. There cannot be one person like this. There needs to be 10 to 20, 30,000 safety people in the U S to overcome what we're seeing with the addiction, with the bad people that are online, the one access to your kids. So everybody out mm -hmm. there listening right now, please do one thing. Go Google your kids. Go search online for your kid's name, backwards, forwards, in quotes, without quotes. Go take our webinar if you want to learn more about that. But go search to see what's out there, and then you'll know the next steps based on that. Great. All right. Homework for everybody. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it, man. Cool. Thanks, guys. Take care.